Okay, first step is you copy the contents of your Windows 7 DVD to a folder on your hard drive. I like to use a C drive. I'll show you why later. Also, back up your drivers. Your currently installed drivers, you can use a program by Iceman ND. I like it's called Driver Backup. The reason I like this program is because he renames the INF files. There's not OEM58.inf in, in its drivers. It's, he renames it using the cat file, I think. So you do Control A to select all and Control B for backup. After you've backed up your drivers, I want you to go in the subfolders and I want you to rename them. I, I, I want you to remove any spaces. So you, you, you actually you squeeze them together or you can use like a like underscore or a dash to separate them. You can do this step manually. You can actually do it manually. You can open the INF file and you do search for the source disk file section. Source disks, plural files. And in it, under it, you'll see a name of all the files you have to have and, and sometimes source disk names have, has like a, a subfolder like you can see right here. Some ATI and NVIDIA drivers are pre-compressed. They're like DL and you see like an underscore. That means like they're pre-compressed. You can expand them manually like this. You, you open a command prompt or you CD to this folder. You do expand dash R for rename and star for like all the, all the files in here. And what, what that'll do is that'll expand them to this format and you can delete the compressed ones. Watch out for any new NVIDIA drivers. I don't think you can integrate those so, so be careful. I have older cards. I have a GeForce Go and GeForce FX 5200. So fortunately those drivers are older and they, they can still be man, they can still be integrated. What else? Okay now updates. You can either back up all your updates, you know, the default Windows updates, or you can use like a, a update pack or something. I have mine stored in two folders. I have them separated. I have extras and I have an updates folder. There's no reason for that. You can put them all in one folder in any name or anything. Also, you can notice that they're in cab format. They're not MSU. I use a program by Cerebi called HF Extract. And to extract those. Okay. Now. We're going to be working with two files, boot.wim and install.wim. Boot.wim only because I have to integrate my RAID drivers. Because if I don't, I have to load driver on, on Windows 7 setup, you know. If we open the install.wim, we're going to notice that there, there are multiple folders. So we use 7-zip to open this. There are multiple images or folders, and you, they have different numbers. There's 1 through 5. Number one is Windows 7 Starter, and number five is Windows 7 Ultimate. Number four is Home Premium, etc., etc. The way we know what version is which is you can extract this XML file, and you can see, or we can use a program by the from in the Windows Automated Installation Kit called ImageX. ImageX slash info is the switch. Now you do right here. We do a path to our to, to our WIM file. So you can do C colon backslash. Or if you're using the C drive, you don't have to put C colon backslash. You just you have to use a backslash seven sources and uh, install that WIM. And we hit enter, and this is like X XML type layout. You know, if you look. You see index 1 is Windows 7 Starter, and index 5 is Windows 7 Ultimate, which is the one we're going to be working with. So when, whenever you mount, we're going to mount index 5. Or in my case, we're going to delete all the other crap and just leave you know, this index. Okay, where shall we start first? Okay, first, we're gonna, I'm going to do my driver in boot.wim. If you open boot.wim, you're going to notice that there's two there's two indexes. I think image one is the one that Windows PE uses, and image two is the one that you know the the Windows setup uses. So if you can see, there's a setup.exe in there. So and there's no setup.exe in index one. So we're gonna mount index two. So the way we do that is we use dism slash mount wim. Slash, let me do slash WIM file. One word. Now you do colon right here. This is where we put the path to our WIM file. You do C colon, and I don't have to do, do the C colon part. Seven sources. 
boot.wim, not install.wim, we're doing boot.wim right now. Index colon, oh, slash, I forgot the slash. Slash index colon, colon index 2. Oh, I forgot to create a, an empty folder from, to mount to, okay. This, I want you to do this step also. We have to create an empty folder. You can name it whatever you want. I, I like to name my mount. And this is where we're going to mount the files to. This is where the mount the image to. And I go slash mount here. Let me do colon backslash m o u n t backslash again for you know to indicate it's a it, it's it, it's a it's a folder. You don't have to do the backslash there. And now index two of boot.wim is mounting. Okay, my image was successfully mounted. And if you go into your mount folder, you'll see all the files there. You have like Windows, System32, and all that crap. It's the same. You have your setup.exe. Okay, a quick tip right now. If you're using, if you're installing Windows 7 from a from a portable HDD, a little you know USB HDD, I want you to copy your unattended.xml in here because if you put it on the root of your of your hard drive, it's not going to get detected. So a little tip is to to mount boot.wim index two and you copy your auto unattended.xml in here and you save it. All right. Okay, now we're going to integrate my RAID drivers, and that's located in Drivers Toshiba RAID. This is the driver we're going to integrate into, into boot.wim. So the way we do that is we do image, we do DISM slash image. We do colon backslash mount or C colon backslash. Then we're going to do add driver slash add dash driver. And we do space slash driver. And we do colon. Now this is the path to our driver, so it's in. Oh crap! So this is the path to our driver now. So we do backslash drivers backslash Toshiba RAID underscore RAID. Now if if we're no, I'll show you about the recurse later. We don't have to use recurse right here. So. Now what the ISM is going to do is, is, is it's going to go to Toshiba RAID and it's going to scan it for how many INF files are in there and it's going to integrate however many INF files into the mount deer, into the mount folder, into the mounted, the mounted image right here, you know. So we're not working with the, with the WIM file, we're working with the mount folder. So it found one driver and it's installing it. Okay, the operation completed successfully. Now that we're done here, this is, this is all I'm going to do. You can copy your auto on a 10.xml in here or whatever, you know. It'll work any, 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 if you're, if you're using a, a, a CD or something, you don't have to do this step. But anyway, okay, wh where am I? We're unmounting it. Okay, so we're going to unmount this successfully integrated image. So the way we do that is DISM slash slash unmount whim slash mount deer we have to, sh to tell it where the which mount deer we want to unmount in this in this case it's, it's the mount folder and we can either do slash commit if you want to save it or slash discard if you want to save it so if you want to you know delete whatever you did because if you made it like a mistake or something you use slash discard but in this case since we want to save it we use slash commit and now my image is being unmounted and it's being saved so if you go in the mount here you're going to see these these files disappearing oh a quick tip if you have an antivirus I want you to disable that sucker Disable any real time protection because it'll go much faster this way, you know. For me, at least, because I have like a, I don't have like a really fast PC. Okay, my image is being saved first, and then it's gonna be unmounted. Okay, image saved. It's gonna unmount it. It's gonna delete all this crap. You know, it's gonna. As you can see it's already been deleted. 
and there we have it. That's how you update boot.wim with your RAID or SATA drivers. Now we're going to turn our attention to install.wim. What I like to do is I like to delete all the other all the other um, SKU versions or whatever they call that. I like to delete, you know, and just leave Windows 7 Ultimate. Some people they like to, you know, update it with the X64, you know, and stuff. But I like to delete delete all this crap and just leave index number five, which will be index number one. Okay, there's several ways of deleting all the crap inside. You can use image X slash delete. Then you the path to your to your WIM file backslash seven sources install dot WIM. Then you put the index number in this case one, which is starter. Then you use slash check. You don't have to use slash check, but I like to use it. You know, and you do this like four times, and that that'll leave you with Windows Seven Ultimate. That doesn't actually make your 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 WIM file any smaller. It it just it just deletes all the other versions, you know. So you'll notice it'll probably increase in size by like one 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 megabyte or something, like 0 .1, 0 .01 megabyte. Another way to do it is to use imagex slash export. This will export a single version, just just the index number five. So you do export, then you do the path to your WIM file, seven sources install.wim and we do the index number which is 5 and the path to where we're going to export it and the name of the WIM file so we're going to export it to exported I have to create this folder or I'm going to get an error install.wim so I'm going to create an exported folder right now C new folder exported this is where the, 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 the new.wim file with just the image number 5, it's going to be number 1 in install.wim, but you'll see. So it's starting. You can see an exported new WIM file is created, install.wim. And that's where my Windows 7 Ultimate is going to get exported to, and only that, that SKU version. You know, all the other versions are going to be left behind. It takes like 1 or 2 minutes. Let me pause this and I'll be back. And there we have it. We have our install.wim, which is only Windows 7 Ultimate. All the other versions were left behind. The way we can confirm that is we do imagex slash info. You can go up and down on your on your on your arrow keys of your keyboard and all the stuff that you did before will be saved. So we go exported. Install.wim. And there we have it, Windows 7 Ultimate. Just that version. Index 1. So when you mount mount your 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 index uh, your install dot win, make sure we use index one instead of five now. Okay, what you can do is you can you can import more versions into this this install dot win. Like let's say you want Windows Seven, you know, home 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 basic or something. You know, you, you do the same thing. You do imagex slash slash export, and you just change the the index number here, like four. You know. That will that will import Windows 7 Home Premium. I think is is number four, or you can you can import a, a, a the 64-bit version of Windows 7 Ultimate. You know you can you can you can have that on a on a separate folder. You can do seven. You know let's say you have seven x64 folder with the with the 64-bit version of Windows 7 Ultimate, and you would do this image. Ah oh, crap. You do this, index number five, and this will import, you know, Windows 7 Ultimate X64 into into this single install.wim. It it goes a lot faster the second time around. So, okay, now what? Okay, now I copy, I cut, I cut this, and I replace the one in the seven folder, <coughs> in the sources folder, with this one. It's slightly smaller, so. There we have it. So we do slash info again. Seven sources installed, and we have it Windows 7 Ultimate only.